Hey everybody, welcome back to Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal Sloby. With me, of course, my good friend, Oren Ronan. Hi everyone. My good friend, Turbo C. Hello. My good friend, Devious Vacuum. Welcome back. My good friend, Jim. Hey everybody. We are back with the House of Fata Morgana. <laughs> hey, we're back in Fata Morgana. Very appropriate this episode. Yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> new, uh, new place, new year, new time period, new story, new characters. You know how it works. Devac, you want to take it away? Uh, well, we find ourselves going through the third door into 1869. Nice. Nice. And, uh, that's the second and last time I'm going to make that joke. (laughs) Or am I? Um, so when we entered the door at the end of the last episode, uh, last session, uh, there was pool table and cigar smoke and, um, the title that appears, uh, in the in the window is Pig Iron Manor, uh, and we come to 1869 in America, probably in New York. Where else would probably. it be? Probably. Probably. They never say America, though. Never, even once. It's, yeah, they say the New World. Yeah, they never say, like, <laughs> yeah, they're just building a transcontinental railroad somewhere. Yeah. To the Pacific. So, yeah, it's from somewhere. Could be anywhere. I mean, there's plenty of continents. And uh, the current master of the house is a man named Jacopo. And uh, we don't know where he's from yet, but later on we learn that he's a Sicilian immigrant to America. Mm -hmm. And he brought the mansion with him. No. (laughs) Yeah, apparently. We, We have no idea how the mansion got there. He he looks like a JoJo character. He uh like he's in the Sicilian mafia. Does not act like one though. I was like, finally, all of my knowledge from Golden Wind can be applied into a different game, <laughs> to a different situation. Wait, what is Golden Wind? A game? Um, no, the latest JoJo season because they also have like capos and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Your best knowledge of ma- the mafia comes from anime. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Not even The Godfather, The Sopranos, like, all oh. the good fellas, all that stuff? Well, I mean, I I guess. Oh I hadn't heard God. the word capo before, though. Arrgh, get, get the hell out of here! I'm not... You fucking nerd! Organized, all right, go ahead. organized crime is not really, like, an interest of mine. <laughs> Bucciaretti opened up a zipper in the basement of the mansion, and then t- they pushed it through into the new world. There we go. Yeah. Are there even mentions like that in New York or near it? Yeah, like in um, upstate New York, maybe. Like, not New York City, really, you know, but, like, close by. Although the New York City of 1869, maybe, you know? That's true. Like, I'm sure, yeah. like, anything that wasn't, like, you know, Manhattan south of the Central Park was pretty, you know, pretty rural. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Jersey. He could be from Jersey. <laughs> we're very mobby. No, we're not, actually. <laughs> Because the Sopranos, we are, but whatever. And, uh, so during this time, yeah. So, this was interesting because this was finally a time period that I didn't really need to look up in order to know what was happening. Because, uh, we learned about the Transcontinental Railroad in school. Yeah. Five minutes into it, I, I went to Wikipedia to look to look at when the Transcontinental the train like, was, was, was built. And it's accurate. It's, it's exactly at that time the company the right and everything. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we're going to find out how exactly right it is. Yeah, so Jacopo is um, the old-timey version of investors nowadays. And, like, it's all it's all literally the same shit, where it's just like, here's me and my Shark Tank gang playing pool together, talking about our latest investments, except instead of, you know, a startup or, or Tesla, they're talking about the railroad. And uh, during that time, there were two railroad companies, Union Pacific, which you may have heard of before, and Central Pacific, which you've not heard of before. And um, Jacopo is is, um, investing in Central Pacific. Um, The game even references how Chinese immigrants were exploited to work on the railroad during this time, which is something Mm -hmm. American children are not taught in school. I think you learn it, though, honestly. And Jacopo's just like, yeah, that happens. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things, like, you hear about, right? Yeah. 
textbooks haven't changed in 50 years. Well, not in, not in school. Hmm. I just mean, like, it's in movies and stuff yeah. where you'll hear about it. It's not like, you know. But yeah, not in school, no. It's in The Sopranos. Exactly, yeah. Jacob talks about how you have to make sacrifices to build a great thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't break an... As long as yeah. it's not him who's being sacrificed. Exactly. No, very... You, you can't make an omelet without breaking some racist eggs, you could say. <laughs> yeah. You know. Or you can't build a racism omelet with... Whatever. At any rate, this metaphor is not working. Oh, yeah. Just a quick... Just a quick warning for everyone. Um, <laughs> Jacopo is a fucking libertarian, so get ready <laughs> for that this whole chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Captains of industry... One thing uh, I do think, man, because we kind of, sort of, not spoiled, but we got a little ahead of ourselves, is that although he's, like, got a connection to organized crime, he, this is a quote-unquote on the up-and-up. You know what I mean? Like, this part of it, it seems like, is that he's just investing straight. I like, mean, not- they don't mention, like, hey, go have this guy take a walk in into the ocean or any of that shit. In 1869, the difference between robber barons and, nice. and the organized mob is very, very minimal. That's fair. I, I guess I meant more like, I don't want you to think that this is like an enforcer or something that's a traditional mobster sort of thing. Like, you know, that kind of deal. He's an awful person, don't get us wrong, just not in the the typical mob way. Oh, yeah, he sucks, but there's like mobsters I like much better than him. Yeah, I, I wish if there was more mob stuff in this, I think I would have enjoyed it more because there'd be more intrigue. <laughs> this is kind of a story about how the mob started in... Yeah. America, and I, I, I didn't look into that, so I don't know how accurate that is regarding the timeline. It isn't at all. Yeah. No, the, the mob would not have been involved in any of this stuff at this point. Um, nobody rose big enough to be involved in the Transcontinental Railroad. But it's, you know, it's an era that's probably, it's, it's like the next era that's coming up is going to, be, to have the involvement of the mob right around the turn of the century. So it's not unusual to have this kind of story. That's the other thing, too, is like the mob is, as far as we know, is not like, it, well, I guess we can get there when we get there. Yeah. So. I'm glad we have these New Jersey mob experts uh, on the podcast. So I um I will tell you I, I I do I mean like you get interested in this shit so you know I read Donnie Brasco both of the books. Is that what it's like to have Italian ancestry? <laughs> Can I tell you one thing that's very frustrating about The Sopranos is I had a couple of friends who right after who are after were like you know my uncle is was like kind of connected and it's like you mean that uncle you've never mentioned before. Like, being connected or anything before this popular show came about? That's interesting, you know? Tell me more about this thing you have never once fucking told me about, and it's now, you know, whatever. Because, like, it's... Yeah. Okay. Now that crime is cool. Yeah, crime is yeah, cool. Yeah, he's... Yeah. It, it's... Well, yeah, I have a, well, I don't want to get on The Sopranos, because that's, like, a totally different off-topic thing, but, like, it is... There's... It's actually a thing that the creator of the show, David Chase, who I think is a total jackabo. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but like he's like, like people are like he was like a concern. People thought they're too likable, so I feel like he spent the season like making them really unlikable. But whatever. Anyway. So during this time, there were a lot of people in the mansion all the time. There were a ton of maids, and the maid, our maid, um, was the head. Who maid. doesn't like Jacopo? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like him. And, uh, she's, like, she even is, like, he was still full of himself, like. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, how, how bad a character you have to be in this game for the maid not to like you? Like, even yeah. you're a Mas- you can Masa, she kind of liked, you know? Yeah. Like, it wasn't really his fault. She's like, this guy's, like, he was a fucking serial killer, but this guy is such an asshole. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the white-haired girl is already present when we start, so she's mm-hmm. already Jacopo's wife, and... Um, she can see. Yeah, she can see. She has a different backstory. Um, we meet her because we open on Jacopo and his uh, shark tank having a uh, having a meeting and playing pool and, and bragging it to each other, and she comes in and offers everyone some tea... And um, Jacobo's like, get out of here. This isn't your job. Like, don't. Who are you don't... fucking kidding? Yeah, exactly like that. Um, in that same voice. No, but actually, actually though, he does like. Not right, obviously not that voice because but like he doesn't he say does have... No, he, uh, he does later. Uh, he does have an affectation though. You know what I mean? Like he does kind of talk a little bit of that like like toward the beginning anyway. Like when he's in that room with the billiard ball, it's like don't don't you think that you know that kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And even Jacobo's asshole friends are like, hey, dude, be nice to your wife. What the fuck? Yeah. And um, so he is right off established as being just an asshole to his wife specifically and no one else just all the time. And he's like, why you guys got to break my balls about this? All right. <laughs> Don't break my balls. This is a p- personal matter here. Personal. I got to deal with Personal. My- Mind your fucking business. I fucking invite you over to my billiard table and talk about your Central Pacific and investment and this is how you treat me. Anyway, sorry. Welcome to the next two hours of this. <laughs> Welcome to the next two hours of this podcast. It's just going to be this accent the whole podcast because it's finally yeah. relevant. Mm. So you got um, what you got? What you got to break my balls? <laughs> and um, Jacobo like goes outside the room and like has words with the white haired girl, and um, and she's like, "I'm sorry." I was just trying to help, but she's like, when are we going to spend time together next? And um, he keeps being like, you know, st- st- stay in your room until I need you. What? We s- we spent time together two months ago. Yeah. And, like, it seems like he wants her to just stay in her room unless he calls for her, like like a possession. It's It's almost honestly a little too much, in a way. Like... I don't know, you know, like it's it, he's he's like really shitty. I mean, it gets worse. Le- yeah. it, get, it gets worse later. <laughs> oh, it certainly does. It's uh, just I don't know. So, the white haired girl in this is very shy and demure, and like she's like so like not assertive. She just it's really sad. Like, and she never gets better. No. <laughs> And even the the maids in the house bully her and make fun of her um, because she won't fight back. And this is America, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, the maids knock all the tea out of her hand. Like high school bullies. It's very Cinderella. It's like, oh, I guess you gotta clean it up, don't you? Yeah, it is. Yes! Good call. Is Cinderella, except for one maid who's nice to her, who's named Maria, who has short blonde hair and reminds mm-hmm. me of Sybil from Silent Hill. Okay, I can see that, yeah. And uh, there's themes in the beginning of like people saying to each other, like, that's not your job. Like, uh, like Jacobo says to a uh, white haired girl, like, it's not your job to like help us or whatever like to like make tea and then the maids are like it's not your job to like clean up when the tea spills and stuff like that but that didn't really go anywhere so I don't know there was a lot of that kind of people saying that it wasn't your her job to do things in in the beginning and um the maid uh our maid uh cuts in to be like I was working there at that time but it was too large and too busy and I couldn't really keep track um, of what was going on with the white haired girl, so she didn't uh, she didn't know um, how she didn't know how bad it was at the time because I guess she was overwhelmed. Uh, a likely story, honestly. Like, I mean, I don't know how I feel about about whatever the maid says. Uh, it's implied she was the head maid. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they even I think they even say it because she goes and talks to Jacobo and he's like. Um, and he's like, ah, the head maid is here. So, and everyone's kind of scared of her, like they always are. Uh, so we go, then we go get a scene of the white-haired girl and Maria. And in private, Maria speaks with an accent. Um, I guess that is that is like very much that like stereotypical New York accent. I guess it's supposed. Hey, to be. what do you want me to clean here? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but when she's working, she speaks, like, very enunciated English, and then casually she speaks like that, and, um, they have a conversation. Like what, Dvac? Do the voice, Dvac. <laughs> Do the voice, Dvac. Do the what? voice. <laughs> For, oh, like, like, how Maria talks? Yeah. Oh, um. Come on, you know how to do it. Don't fucking break my balls. <laughs> well, she says, I'm, I was gonna quote, like, a specific line that she said, but I didn't write it down. Um, and she was like, Oh, madam, you have, like, such beautiful hands. And she was even like, Oh, like, I just, like, wanna, like, 
suck on your fingers? Oh, or did yeah. You kind of, like, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. And That's I was right. Like, Is this the Yuri chapter? Here we go. And it's not. I was really sad. I was really sad. I really wanted this to be gay. I really wanted Maria to steal the white haired girl from Chakapa. And it comes up a couple more times, too. They hint at it hardcore. I really wanted it. I wanted it so bad. I, I, I also really thought it was going that way when, when they dance later, but. But he didn't. <laughs> hey, what if I licked your hands? Just, just kidding. I mean, but yeah. I mean, what if? Hey, it's just you know, it's just like two girls licking each other's hands. You know, we do that all the time in 1869. Am I right? <laughs> Having a slumber party, yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> hey, I got, I got a crystal for you. Come on, we're gonna be, we're gonna be girl bros together. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, and. Um, but that, I'm really sad that that's not what happened. Um, and so, but they, see, it seems like they have a good relationship and that they're very close. Um, but their relationship is almost, like, their friendship is, like, too intense. And that's what made me think that Maria actually had a crush on the white-haired girl. Um, and also because the language she used is gay as hell. And, um... What, like, I want to lick your fingers? A little little bit, yeah. It's, I, in my, my notes just say, Maria compliments the white-haired girl's fingers, it's gay, it's real gay hours, and then it's real gay hours again in all caps. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, like, she just goes off, and, um, and, uh, and then she's like, you know, Maria, uh, Maria's like, you know, white-haired girl, you can divorce this asshole, like, he's such a bad guy to you, like, you can just divorce him. And I was like, see, she's making a move. Like, I was like, maybe Maria's divorce. You know, in 200 years, what might be acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> um, but instead, the white-haired girl reminisces and is like, there was a time when he was nice. And then we learn more about the white-haired girl's backstory in this chapter. And the funny thing is, like, it's not its not actually that nice. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just, yeah, it's just less worse. It's barely. It's just everything about this sucks <laughs> tell us about what what happened where was the white hair girl from in this uh wasn't she, wait no i'm thinking of maria is from like a misty island or something she said no that's the white hair girl she's from a misty island nation so, so, so what is that I, I don't know somewhere in the uk it might be but also jacopo says he's from a, a mediterranean island but not yours and she says she's from a misty island. I assume oh, at yeah. first it was England, but then I don't know. Yeah, what's misty and in the Mediterranean? Uh, I don't know. Where? No, it, don't know. It, it could also just be one of those things where, like, they're not specific about where she's from. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's a vampire. Yeah. But I thought, I thought um, before that line, I thought that she that the misty island nation was probably, you know, England. But I'm not sure now. Why you gotta break my balls about where the fucking girl's from, all right? Probably none of it's real anyway, honestly. That's my theory. She's from Mafada Morgana. None of it's real. I think she's she's created by the house, yeah. You gotta marry a girl from, you know, uh, back home. The unnecess- unspecified island. <laughs> I think it would be interesting <laughs> if she was from, um... Where, where were they from last time? Valencia? Yeah. Yeah, I think, so. yeah. I, think that, I thought that would be interesting, but that Italy is not an island. Um, so no, Valencia is in Spain, but uh, right? Oh, Spain. Sorry. And uh, it's just it's kind of like unspecified. But the bigger picture is that she is from a family with a name and not much wealth. And Jacobus, like a, he's a nouveau riche. He's got money. Mm-hmm. She's, but she is nobility of some kind, unspecified. And they're both immigrants to the to America, right? And. The white hair girl, because we don't know her name, we can't really tell. Um, but she claims to Maria to have experienced true love when they met each other on their wedding day, because they had an arranged marriage, and uh, they had a wedding, and the afterwards they had like a not really a honeymoon, but just like a week off together. Because they never met each other before, so, you know, and he was like, well, what do you want to do? And she's like, I don't know. We could, like, you could just show me around town because I just got here. <laughs> also because I can't, I can't go anywhere because I, I, I'm weak to the sun. 
Oh yeah. right, yeah. She can't like go out out all day and run around and stuff. Yeah, and, and nice guy Giacomo's reaction there is that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my freaking life. You want to walk <laughs> around the neighborhood? What are you stupid? This is your fucking honeymoon? That's all you want to do? You stupid fatamagu. He's like, fine. I mean, if that's what you want to do, we could do it. But Jesus Christ, that is dumb. No, that's not even what happens then, because he kind of then he starts walking, and she's like, "Oh, I guess we don't have to do anything." He goes, what? You didn't say you didn't you wanted you didn't say you didn't you say you wanted to do that? You know, but like without specifying, that's what they're going to do. You know. <laughs> he keeps getting mad at her their whole this whole time for like not be not taking a firm stance about anything. Um, yeah, because she's so shy that she just will be like, maybe we could do that. She'll never say like, I want to do this and like back it up, and it really bothers right. him. And uh, and and in that moment, I was like, maybe no, actually, he's just an asshole. <laughs> um, do they ever talk about like what happens with her in the sun, or they just say she's sensitive or whatever? They just, I think they kind of just go like, yeah, she's real sensitive to sunlight, whatever. Because she talks about being sickly, too, I think, right? Where she can't, yeah. like, take long trips. Maybe it's because she is uh, created by the mansion, and so she can't leave the mansion. Maybe she's sickly because she doesn't have any vitamin D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can vampires drink Sunny D? That would solve a lot of problems, I think. But they still need iron. I don't think Sunny D has iron in it. <laughs> is that why they need to drink blood? Because of the iron? There. No. Well, no, because... <laughs> the, there's no. <laughs> yes, they all have an iron deficiency. That's the big problem. I've heard whenever, whenever in like sci-fi movies they try to like make like scientific vampirism, it's always like vitamin D and iron. Mm. Yeah, allergic to vitamin D and crave more iron than normal, which is just the dumbest combination ever. I say. Yeah, which would make you drink blood of all things. Like, come on. You know, Snatcher made uh, scientific vampires. Just FYI. Anyway, sorry. They so they take a carriage ride around town. And Jacobo talks more about how he's a libertarian and poor people just need to work harder. Um, cause he worked really hard and he's fine. So you need to, you can't give people everything. You need to incentivize them so that they'll work harder cause they're lazy. Um, cool. Great. <laughs> and, um, again, thinking about the warning at the beginning of the game that's like, these characters' views do not reflect the views of the authors. So he takes her to a photography studio, and at first she thinks that they're going to get their picture taken together, and then he's like, oh no, that's not what I, no, I'm just here to pick something up. And you think like, what a piece of shit. And then he's like, but then it's like, no, the actual surprise is cooler than a, taking a photo together. It's this, um, uh, finactoscope. Here, look at this paper on a wheel. <laughs> Fina- Finacistoscope, I think. Anyway, it's a it's a flip book. It's a it's a flip book, but it's a wheel that spins. Yeah, it's it. Uh, to be fair, it's probably something that's really fucking cool in 1869. Yeah, yeah, people love that shit. Oh yeah, I mean this this is the first animated GIF. Exactly, he gave her the greatest gift of all, anime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember the the thing in Disney's Tarzan that shows them the picture? That's what it is. Yeah. Like when yeah. they they, except that's a projector version. This is like apparently like a kind of a viewmaster sort of version that you put in front of your face. It's not even a viewmaster, it's just a piece of paper on a spindle. And you spin it. Oh, is that it? Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. It's like, it looks, yeah. yeah are, are you sure? I think it's a little more complicated than that. The, the real thing. You have to look through a, a, sl- a slot, yeah. The picture they draw is just like a pizza cutter with drawings on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the the actual things are yeah more elaborate because it like controls like how you view it and. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining Jacobo like yeah, this spinning picture ought to <laughs> occupy your mind, you dumb broad. <laughs> Jeez, now leave me alone, my god. He keeps getting offended about it though because she calls it cute. He's like, no, it's not. It's science. It's not cute. It's your fucking honeymoon. You better fucking like it. Jeez. And she, like, can't really grasp the concept either. Like, he keeps being like, no, it's just, like, tricking your brain. The people aren't really there. And she was like, oh, but the little people are right there. I can touch them. And it's just like, are you for real? I mean, to be fair, now I'm with Jacopo, <laughs> but... I mean, maybe not to that degree, but it's like, oh, man. No, not to that degree, but, like... They're, like, they're both so over the top. Like, she's really over the top in her naivete, and then he's a huge asshole... 
And I'm like, who am I supposed to be siding with? Because thinking the little people are real is real rough. Like, I don't... <laughs> yeah, but she's never seen anything like that before. That's like, that's... That's like when Lestat suddenly didn't know email, right? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> that's, that's actually correct, yes. <laughs> and Maharet knows how to use email and he doesn't, and... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But how does Yakubo... Jumping ahead a little bit, Yakubo really believes that she's capable of this huge, massive deceit plot, and she's like, oh, but I can touch the picture. Yeah. I know, it's... It's it's just because of his own insecurities. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. yeah these two people do not have logical consistency at all. Right. They have a couple of Fatima Fatima Ghanas, <laughs> these are. two. They really are. He talks about how one day they might use the same concept to like take pictures of real places and make the move. Yeah, like yeah. the railroad, which I think the the railroad, the Union Pacific Railroad, uh, or the Transcontinental Railroad opening is like one of the first things that was filmed. If not the first thing? I don't remember. I think so, It's though. up there, yeah. Now that you mention it. And then you mentioned some stick figures fighting. I thought, like, the first film thing was, like, early 20th century? Was it a person sneezing? I thought a horse. Maybe it's photography I'm thinking of. Photography history. They took a picture of it. Oh, no, yeah, it does go back... Well, it doesn't go back to the 1860s, but yeah, it, um... Like, 1890. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was right, it's a horse. Thanks for visiting this part of the podcast, folks, called When We Google Stuff Together. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that was filmed was a horse. Thank you, Turbo. That's great. Now get the fuck out of here! No, I actually know stuff about this. They were trying to decide if the horse ever lifted all four of its hooves off the ground at once. So they decided to invent this technology to take all these rapid photographs. Uh, Is that really true just for that? Holy F! Yeah, they were trying That's to great. analyze the horse trot. You know what that reminds me of? Because that's like, it's funny because it's such a better technology than what it was used for. It's like when Dr. Octopus is trying to show off that power plant, but he's got these like artificial arms and it's like, it's like, I'll just use these silly things I created to help with the reactor. And it's like, you. Yeah, yeah, nuclear fusion, whatever. Yeah, like, it's like, you could have revolutionized the world with the arms. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's my, that's my super relevant Spider Man 2 for take. I, I found my way into the Wikipedia page for the F- F- Finaki scope. Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. the, the first paragraph mentions GIF animation. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. <laughs> oh, that's great. He shows oh, yes. the world's first animated GIF. Honestly, if if my husband gave me that on our wedding day, I would be pretty impressed. <laughs> I had this made for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I had this, I had this <laughs> made for you. <laughs> <laughs> Only this meme can express my love. <laughs> we commemorate our wedding day with this gif. <laughs> it's a cat knocking something off a table. Man. <laughs> Human beings were always the same, actually. <laughs> God, that's good. Oh, there's so, so the white-haired girl is like, oh, Jacopo, you are not just interested in money, you're also interested in, like, science and progress and new inventions and he's like no i'm just interested in money and she's like okay but she knows better and um i feel like like at first it kind of also kind of set it up like i feel like the way that jacopo is like so impatient with the white hair girl and how he wants her to be more decisive is also like to me sort of like a classic difference between americans and non-Americans, but specifically Europeans, but, like, also, like, a lot of people from a lot of places. Like, like you mean, like, where people want you to, like, kind of get to the fucking point? Yeah, I feel like that's a very, like, the difference between an American and a non-American for a lot of, in a lot of cases, like, uh, is that difference of, like, you know, like, come on, just say, get, be blunt, he's blunt, and he's impatient, and, um... That also seems, though, like, an internet jerk, and, an, and a, a regular person in some ways, although she is pretty demure. Yeah, I just, like, neither of them, like, that that sensibility on its own is not inherently bad. It's it's just, like, so it's, like, together, both of them being the way that they are, it just doesn't work. It's just, right. like, even if they were both nice people, they would not get along. He's got, like, that internet asshole hat, too. You know what I mean? Like, he just, <laughs> he does I hate have, him. He does, I think he, does he have a fedora? 
It's a Trilby, I think. It's not a it's not a fedora specifically. I, I think it's Trilby, yeah. Trilby's like worse than a fedora because it's only the, the elite levels that use that one. Yeah, that's like a, it's like a high level gear, you know, version of an internet jerk. And also, he's constantly tipping it in every animation. Yeah. That he has. Yeah. Just really ridiculously. My lady. <laughs> and uh, so they ta- they go out and like uh, Jack. They go to a fancy restaurant. He gets drunk. And they're, like, on the roof looking at the city, and it's very romantic, but of course it doesn't stay romantic for long. Uh, she asks him what his dream- like, what does he want to do? What is his dream? Because she's his wife now, and she wants to support his dream, because that's what a wife's job is in 1869. And, uh, his dream is to own the world. <laughs> what, what a jerk <laughs> Uh, but then as he, she lets him talk more, he says that he wants to go back and fix his home country. Um, that he's like, a lot of things are wrong with how it was run, and I want to be able to make a difference in that. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah, this is where I'm like, okay, oh, alright, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you this up to here, I'm really not feeling this chapter. Like, Giacomo, Giacomo feels really, really one-dimensional. Or almost like how you would try to write a jerk. You know what I mean? Like, where it almost feels unrealistic. I know there are people this bad and things like that, but, like, it's kind of like, I feel like the story is really making, going out of its way to make me hate him to a point where I was kind of turned off. And here I'm like, aha, motivation. So this is gonna, this is gonna change things. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, and it also just felt like there were times where I was just skipping along the, uh, the text and just going like, yep, he's still being an asshole. All right, what's... What's the next thing that's going to happen? Like, it didn't exactly feel engaging. Yeah, I guess that's where I was, too, yeah. Does everybody else? I don't know if that's, like, a general sort of thing. Yeah, the way that he acts is very boring. Like, it, yeah. it, he's, it's very, like, uh, if I just had to, like, suddenly pull a story idea out of my butt, like, that would be sort of the stereotype that was on the edge of my tongue, you know? Like, of, like, oh, he's mean to his wife, he's doesn't, he, he gets mad at her for making tea, <laughs> and then he says, yeah. you know, and he gets And mad. he's racist. <laughs> and you know. he's racist, and he's a libertarian. Like, honestly, at this point, the libertarian part's almost the best thing about him. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, all right, but, uh, yeah, get, whatever. It's like so that's he, yeah, the story. He, that's the story of the, the when she fell in love with him because yeah, she, he was ni- kind of nice to her one time the very first day they were married. But it almost sounds like a Simpsons bit too, where it's yeah. like I remember when he's a nice man, and then it's like they come back from the flashbacks, like actually he wasn't really nice at all. Right? You know, like like yeah. Lisa would point that out or something. Like he yeah. sounds horrible. Like oh yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? But so we come back to the present, and and uh, it, there's a separate like so. So Maria talks to the white-haired girl, and then Maria talks to Jacobo separately. And um, so she's talking to him. She's telling him a horror story to scare him as punishment for being a jerk to his wife. <laughs> um, and she tells him the story of like this maid heard a sound by the chapel area. Is this the um, first jump scare? Is it a jump scare? I thought it was just like. She she jump scared him. Was this the, the skeleton? Yeah, this is a skeleton. Oh I didn't, yeah, all right. I didn't think it was a jump scare per se, but well, I am a big baby, so I jumped at it. You are a big baby, to be fair. I end up clicking too fast because like there's there's a lot of lines in these chapters, so I end up clicking too fast sometimes. I think I, I missed a jump scare sometimes. I'm just like, oh yeah, I read that. And then they're like, oh, there's a skull. I think so. It didn't pop out at me; it just was there on the screen. Yeah. And, uh, Maria and, uh, Jacopo have this, like, they have a, it doesn't tell you right away that they're childhood friends, but they, like, obviously have more of a relationship beyond, uh, a master of the mansion and the maid that works for him. Yeah, that was the first time that, yeah, that it looked like something more is going on there, because, yeah, she, she was talking to him like a regular person, and he wasn't acting like... Like her boss, more like a friend. Yeah, and like at one point she says at the end of, of this particular portion for his telling the ghost story, he's like, I, she's like, I come back and tell you some more ghost stories. And he's like, no, nah, I don't, don't want to listen to ghost stories. I don't like them. I'm, I'm scared. And uh, 
and she, then he's like, ah, um, and she's like, uh huh, and he's like, uh, you could come back and do something other than ghost stories, which just imp- seems to imply that they have, you know, they have a past romantic history. But then, the, no, the the next chapter just goes into like, okay, this is what actually happened. They're actually best friends from when they were children. My theory at that point was that Maria was t- telling the um, white-haired girl to to get a divorce because she wanted yeah. Jacob to herself. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking that. I don't think I was thinking that then, but there is a point when she brought up, and I'm like, aha, you know? And that's when I thought it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And based on both of their backstories, it's actually not impossible that that could have been how it ended up. Um, right. As an alternative to what actually happened. <sighs> and so, yeah, Maria reminds Jacopo about his how, when he used to be kinder when they were younger growing up, and he's embarrassed. And he <laughs> sighs and says, I can't escape anything. Um, you know, I'm sorry. Just You know what? If if that was Maria's plan, it would have been like chapter one minus the incense, but twice the douchebags. <laughs> sorry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, so he's like, looking back on it, he says this line and he's like, I can't escape anything. And he's like referring to the mafia and his family and he can't escape his memories of the past and the place where he can't escape the place where he's from, even though he's in a new country <laughs> with his own money and everything. What are you laughing about? Or, like, he like hands her the, what is it again? The uh, can you, How do you pronounce it? The scope. He fans for the Finesca scope. You see those like two people dancing, and then that guy comes on screen. That this is how mafia works. <laughs> <Sorry, God. laughs> Meanwhile, the white-haired girl is out in the rose garden. So there's still a rose garden in this time, and the maid is back. She's there with the white-haired girl in the garden. And she just straight up is like, hey, do you remember that time that Gamash got in prison for breaking into the owner's safe in 1603? Do you remember uh, the white rose turning red back in 1603? And just like, she just lays it all out and is like, do you remember these things? And the white haired girl has the same name that she had back then. And, and she's like, so you remember? And the white-haired girl's like, no. And uh, the maid says, did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you are waiting for? Which would imply that the white-haired girl's name is Michelle, right? Maybe. That's that's sort of what I was thinking out of it. Yeah. yeah. Wait, um, I'm sorry, how do you get Michelle out of that, though? Because we met Michelle, the, the witch or whatever, the white-haired person, androgynous person. Right. So she's waiting for someone that presumably that the maid knows about. Yeah. It just c- because Michelle has another version that is pronounced differently that is a feminine version of that oh, name. Oh, I see what I was you like, mean. Oh, Got it. Well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe her name is Michelle. Hmm. That could be. I don't know. That's that's what I was thinking. But. Makes sense. Yeah. Now nah, you're full of shit. So, so the, the, then the maid is also by questioning her like this, she is suggesting that the white hair girl's memories of her origin story are false, um, which is also what led me to believe more and more that the white hair girl is something like summoned and created by the house and not actually a real person with like real relatives out, out there in the real world. Or if she does have need to have them for some reason, then they're like they're manifested by the house. They're not real. Yeah, in the previous two stories, the, her, her relatives were dead too, and the dead yeah. in this one, she never has any living relatives. But obviously, her memories are real to her, and she feels like yeah. this is truly what. So, so she might not even realize that she is created by the house. She seems to come from an island on at least the first one and this one, though. It, yeah. Well, maybe not necessarily an island, but she was she in the first one. She said she came from a boat, far away lands. Yeah. Yeah. It's also weird how how like her backstory is accepted by everyone around her, who's not the maid. It just it's I don't know if it's if if it's just a false story or if it's like she's being reincarnated because she has to come back to the house every time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe there's not really that much difference. Like, she exists because she has to exist. 
and um, we get, well, I don't want to skip ahead, but we get told that people are drawn to the house. Maybe she just keeps getting drawn back yeah. to the house every time. We saw that last yes. last chapter. So so my theory for this is, like, her first incarnation was a real shit, and so she has just been cursed to bear witness to all these tragedies. <laughs> real shit. <laughs> So then, a bad. So then, Jacopo starts like really fucking going off. So he pops off about the rose garden, and he thinks that gardens are a sign of weakness because they serve no purpose. Subscribe to my skeptic YouTube channel. <laughs> Jordan Peterson has a whole lecture about this. I know, right? <laughs> God, fuck. And um, so in the next scene, Maria come or the scene changes and Maria comes to inform the white hair girl that Jacopo is going to get rid of the rose garden and he's going to build a miniature railroad there which is of course much more useful and practical than roses and uh <laughs> sorry my notes just say he wants to build a miniature railroad and then a hundred ellipses and then leave him in all caps with spaces between the <laughs> letters <laughs> Like, she, he wants to build a children's ride for her. Which, I guess, given the phonetica scope, that probably wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, his desires are really childish, too. He's a train otaku. Yeah, he is! <laughs> yes. Yep, he's a train spotter. Yo, what'd you call me? <laughs> so then, there's a line that I didn't realize up until this point, which is that they've only been married for a year. Yeah. <laughs> One year. It went south mm -hmm. fast. They forgot how to talk to each other in that amount of time. Oh my god. So, so the white haired girl, like, her all, her one, like, respite was this rose garden, and he took that away from her. And, um, so then later on, later on, um, time passes, and then Maria comes and visits the white haired girl, um, who has been feeling so downtrodden. And again, Maria is like, you can leave at any time. And she's like, no, I have faith in him. I have faith in him. And uh, Maria is like, well... Why? Yeah, why, <laughs> first of all. Um, secondly, she asks the white girl if she wants to go dance in, in the Great Hall. She wants to go dance together, which again, gay. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, she gives... <laughs> The white hair girl, like, almost like a makeover. She's like, oh, like, wear this dress. I got you some perfume. Um, all the girls like this perfume. Here you go. Like, now you can have, like, a nice time. The perfume really hit me when I was like, all right, this is being get pretty gay. This is pretty gay. <laughs> and, um, the, well, sorry, the gayest thing is yes. about to yep. arrive. But she's like, Jacopo's out of town and, like, we can dance and make noise and it'll be fine. Like, don't worry about it. I just want you to have a nice time. So we finally get there. No, wait. And then the gayest part is right now. Here comes the gayest part. Yeah. <laughs> part. <laughs> so then the white hair girl is like, how can two girls dance together? <laughs> <laughs> With their tongues. No, no. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh my god, it's, oh my god, but just, just two girls dancing as friends, just two girls dancing together all alone in a great hall. Yeah, you know, as friends do. And the mate's response is perfect, she's like, oh, it don't matter what bet what's between your legs. And then I'm like, oh, here comes the sex scene, here we go, okay, cool. And then it just yep. never happens. <laughs> and then it ripped the rug out from under me, and I was so sad. Oh man, I really thought that we were going places with this, and it's. Oh, I'm so upset. I'm still upset. How can two girls dance together? God. They just don't have the equipment for it. They don't. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Everyone knows you gotta pull your dick out. What the hell are you gonna do there if you're dancing together with another woman? Oh, they can't do nothing together. How would you enjoy that? <laughs> oh, let me show you. Dun dun. Their boobs will get all over the place. Oh my god! <laughs> Look at this phonetoscope and then. Yeah, it's in the bottom. Oh my god. Science can't make two women dance, see? Look. Oh my god, it's so funny. Uh, so, but so they, they like, they do have fun and there's like a cute moment and, and, but they're all like, 
they're all like out of breath and tired and it what might give the appearance that they were just out on the town together. And of course, Jacopo isn't really gone. He's there. He finds them just as they're leaving the room. And he thinks that the white hair girl went on on the, went on the town because she surely, (laughs) she surely wouldn't be dancing with another woman. Don't tell me you were dancing with that maid, but show me. Exactly. Like his first, his whole idea is that, like, and like, it seems like he's he's initially suspicious of of them together, and then you realize that no, 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 he thinks she's going out, and he's like, "Why are you all out of breath unless you're going out?" I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's insane. That doesn't even really make sense. Like, no. Why were you doing jumping jacks right before you were going out? <laughs> you must have been jogging. How dare you? There's so much, and like what I, I wanted so badly for Maria to be trying to steal the white hair girl from Jacopo, and like that she even she even says like um, before we know more about her backstory, um, the white hair girl's like asking her about her family, and she's like, I don't have a family um, anymore, and I thought it was because she was gay, <laughs> and maybe she divorced her husband because she's so into divorce. And uh, <laughs> and she only gives out pornographic finasciscopes. And now she's like, yeah. And now she's like, come divorce your husband, and we'll go be lesbians together. And I was like, God, please let that be how this chapter ends. But of course, it's not. Of course, no, it, it cannot no. be. That would be really disturbing. Think no. of the tragic end of this chapter being, and they were lesbians. Dun dun dun. Well, that, they're happy. Right? But, but obviously, Jacobo, like that's his punishment for not to ever talking to his wife. <laughs> and oh yeah, exactly. Uh, so so he gets mad at, at at her again and is like, "Go to your room and all that stuff." And uh, the maid, the, the maid at this point is like, "Oh, I'm sorry. This was all my fault. If only I didn't ask you to dance." And at this point, I'm like, "Oh, she's trying to get with Jacopo. Maybe she, she's trying to break him up for that." <sighs> Who knows? Honestly, because it was really like. Oh no, how did this happen? I didn't know he yeah. was going to come home early. Yep. Yeah. Was it my fault? I'm so sorry. I'm like, why? Like, who? which one of these, which one of the couple is she into? Because she's playing both sides here, and it's in, for, in a weird, because you can't have both of them. Um... But, uh, but yeah, so we still don't, we still aren't exactly sure what, what Maria's deal is. And there's a new scene... Uh, where Jacopo is is angrily playing pool, and uh, another man appears, who is like, looks like a vagrant of some kind. He's like dirty and and has like rags on or something. I guess. How do we say his name? Tommaso. Yeah, Tommaso's right. Mm-hmm. Tommaso. Yeah. Tommaso. Tommaso. Uh, refers to so. It sounds like at first it seems like he is uh, related to Jacobo somehow, but he they're not blood related. Uh, he refers to their family as a Cosca, which is the Sicilian mafia, and um, so they talk. They establish that they are they're in the Sicilian mafia. The maid is even sort of like you. You probably haven't heard of it by that word, but I'm sure you're familiar with it, or something along those lines to just be like yeah. Yeah, in the Japanese version, they don't use Cosca, they use Familia. Ah. Which is... Oh, Familia? Like, yeah. as in the, the loan word Familia? Yeah. Which isn't wrong. I mean, they're referring to the same thing. It's it's like the Sicilian families, which are not actual families, they're, they're just criminal organizations where like, people are sworn to. Yeah, I think the translator wanted to use something a little less familiar to American audiences. Yeah. So yeah. he changed it to, Cos- to Cosca. Yeah. I feel like Costco would be, and maybe, and this is my, I mean, I, I don't know this, but, like, I feel like Costco is probably a tough word for Japanese audiences, too, because it seems like it could sound like a lot of different loan words. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe but, not. I don't know. Who cares? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway. They, they do use, the, the, the Japanese does use, every time they say the word kappa, it says in, in, in parentheses, like, the Japanese word for head of family. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Just to explain to the Japanese readers what it is. <laughs> yeah, so they establish all that stuff. So Jacopo's gonna be his family is the Berzati family, and which is not a, a, a not an Italian name. Well, there's mm-hmm. 
Um, there is like Barzotti, which is like actual Italian name, but like it's not spelled like they spell it like a bear and then Zotti, like it's a poster. Like B E A R, yeah. Yeah, Barzotti. It's funny. It made me think of like uh, an expensive car, but that that looked like a bear. <laughs> I'm take a ride in my new Barzotti. <laughs> the big bear head. <laughs> now it's like the Oscar Mayer wiener dog. <laughs> It's like it's a it's a bear that kind of looks like a Lamborghini. So it's just a bear's body. Yeah, no, that's no a bear's. I'm sorry, a bear's body is Monokuma's oh, sports god, car. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um, so Tommaso's there to ask for money. He's like, you're gonna be the next capo, like you know you. And also, he says you need to be nicer to your wife. <laughs> so even Tommaso has heard about this. Well, but. And he's like, she was smiling and when she came to visit me, and uh, Jacobo's like, what? She never smiles. How dare she say I need to be nicer to her? <laughs> yeah, she never smiles at anything I ever do when I'm yelling at her, what, she, what a dumbass she is, and I don't understand how she, she's smiling at you, just for, you know, being a person. <laughs> you fu- you fucking my wife? <laughs> if she's smiling, you must be, you know. It's wild. Because then it's like, yeah, and, and then, but then Tommaso is like, here, um, have some of that same popular perfume that, that Maria gave the white-haired girl. Like, the ladies love it. Here, try giving her this perfume. And, and Giacomo's like, I hate this perfume. Like, earlier when he was yelling at her, he was like, I hate the way perfume smells. Which, again, subscribe to my skeptic YouTube channel. Mm. And, uh, so... He takes the perfume uh, and... Tommaso specifically says that the uh, white-haired girl came to him to to get his advice about how to deal with, with oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and Jacopo is like, how, how does she even know you? Yeah. Yeah. So he's confused, almost as if Tommaso is lying. And uh, he goes later goes and yells at the white haired girl and thinks that she he, so he thinks that she looks down on him he thinks that she's laughing at him behind his back and like doing all this stuff and uh she's just pretending to be nice in person um but of course there's no evidence of this <laughs> even if she went and talked to Tommaso about him which he which he didn't actually um you know she that still doesn't mean that she looks down on him or that she's making fun of him so he's just completely fabricated this from his own insecurity. I mean, he deserves it. Yeah, like even but, yeah. in his own explanation, all she did was like talk to someone who identifies as a member of his family, which why should she know any different, and ask what can what can we do to make him feel more comfortable with me and talk to me more. Like that's all is gets going on. Yes. Like, Are you fucking kidding me? What? How dare you say that? Yeah. <laughs> And he gets so mad that he says, I'm going to lock you in a special room that you can't leave. And that is a shed in the backyard. So at this point, from now until the end of the chapter, the white haired girl lives in a shed in the backyard of the mansion. To, to be fair, big shed. It's, it is it is a, a big shed. But yes, yeah, still a shed. <laughs> I'm jo- I'm joking about the to be fair part. Spacious. Yeah. Uh, I I will say it was bigger than when he said that in my head. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, you know. But and then you see it's like, okay, it's shitty, but at least it's a room. Yeah. 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 And am I wrong, or is it in the is it where the rose garden used to be? Yeah, it is. So so basically, he's like, hey, you know what? You know that place you loved? Well, I tore it down, then I built you a prison, and now you go into prison. Yeah. It's also back to the story from the first chapter with the girl locked in a room. The, the white haired girl, girl. Oh style. yeah, and she even I think she even says like this feels familiar to me. Yeah. Later on, yeah. So at this point, the other maids continue like all the maids continue to make fun of her. What the fuck? How do you even make fun of someone locked in a shed? <laughs> nice shed. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Like, what? P.S. I'm scum. <laughs> you know, like, I, yeah. <laughs> um, so, of course, Maria volunteers to be the one who delivers her meals. Um, so, Maria is her one point of contact with the outside world. Uh, Maria, like, sits down with the white hair girl and is like, hey, have you considered feeling the emotion of anger? <laughs> and, um, and the white hair girl's like, I don't know. 
that seems too <laughs> like too much, you know, to feel the emotion of anger at Jacopo. So she said, like, sometimes I think about it, but you know, then, then I remember. I, I remember that one yeah. time he was almost nice to me a year ago. <laughs> at this point in my notes, I wrote, "Man, I hope Maria isn't evil," and I bolded <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, you guessed. <laughs> I. Th- at this point, I, s- I began to get suspicious, and um, and I was like, "Please, no! I want, I no! I wanted this to be gay. Why is it? Uh, why I is see. this it? So this is the first point that it occurred to me that uh, maybe Maria is evil. I I did, I did, I was like, she's not gay, but like I didn't think she was evil just yet, personally. She's a very good actress. She 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 says all the right things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we go back to what Jacopo's doing. He thinks that a real capo would probably have a better relationship with his wife. That's correct. Maybe? Um, and he, so he's thinking about, like, he, he, like, is thinking about his true intentions and in doing all this, and he says, and he claims that he wants to protect the white haired girl's purity and innocence from this scary mafia lifestyle. <laughs> It would again, like we start to get into this theme of like, well, then say that, right? Like, why aren't you? You have all these th- these thoughts and these motivations, but you never say any of them, so they don't matter because all you're doing is being an asshole and you're not explaining yourself or talking about how you feel. Then we um, get a flashback with Maria and Jacques Beau as childhood friends, where okay, so. From, from what I... From, uh, this was hard to follow. So Maria's Maria's last name is Campanella, and yes. they were the people... They were the family in charge of the city where they lived. Yeah, her grandfather and her father. But then, the, and the Berzadis were, like, the the right hand, like... Because they said, like, the, the, mm-hmm. the guard dog bit us. So, like, they... they the Berzadis were, like, their... I don't know, like number one type of guys, but then they, then the Berzadis had a coup and took over and killed Maria's father and grandfather. Well, they, they don't, they don't say that now, but but yeah, but yeah. When they were kids, the Campanellas were in charge, and now obviously they're not. So, if if you're a fan of the Sopranos, by the way, this is kind of a Sopranos April relationship, if that helps. Meaning, like. Yeah, they're friends and things like that, but, like, meaning that they're all part of the same organization and they have very close families is how I'm taking it, but there's competition involved in internal infighting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, like, the actual set, uh, setup for Sicilian mob families is that there is the capo familia and then there's the underboss who's, like, the capo bastone or the solo capo, and that's, that's like, how that's structured. Like, that is how it's been for, like, a, a long yeah. time. Yeah. What is, and what, there is a concierge. I, I, I'm sure I butchered that, but, like... Yeah, but, like, he's not really mentioned, right? Like, he's mentioned, like, it's, like, the guy's, like, grandfather or something, but I feel like he doesn't really do a whole lot. Yeah, well, it, it, that's, that gets into a whole, whole other different thing, which is, like, he's, like, the he's like right. the, the, the aide. In the Godfather movies, he's, he's a lawyer, but in other mafia stuff, it's just, like, he's the impartial guy. He's, like, an advisor, almost, you could say. So, that was their family's relationship, and they also had a dog friend named Nero, not sure what the dog is supposed to represent in this, but... Innocence. I, yeah? No, I'm kidding. Sure. No, I have no idea. Well, the flashback is when Maria and her mother are being sent away from town, because even though the family is in charge, the, the, the father feels like something is coming and he wants them away. Yeah. But not right away, it's coming soon. To keep them safe. Yeah. And so they, they set up, like, I guess it's in land that... Um, uh, what do you call it, the Giacomo's family controls and they have this little house that they call the Casa Nostra which is like our house but it's also a play on the name for the term for the Sicilian Mafia which is Cosa Nostra and it's just like a little place to set up shop where they've got like you know hey we can hang out here even though our families are feuding and we have this dog who's like you know making it more of like our own little family together yeah they're they're little little kids and they know they they don't want any part of it yeah They're, they're playing house but like in a more like it's more of a refuge way from the, the drama that's going on above them. And they also have no other friends because all the other kids are like, don't want to get involved no. with the kids of the, of the big no. families. 
And so then Jacobo promises that he will make a place for Maria in the future. So, like, she's leaving and he's like, I'm going to figure this out. Like, in the future, I'm going to make a place for you always. And we're always going to be best friends, even if our families are fighting. Which explains why she ended up as a maid in this house, um, even though they're friends. And at what point he actually volunteers to be like, oh, I'll come serve your family if I, if you guys end up on top. Yeah. We'll make this work, Marie. <laughs> he gives her a parting gift, uh, a best friends forever kind of gift, and it is a bullet cartridge from a Colt yeah. rifle. I like that, honestly. I thought that was kind of like, not creative per se, but it was definitely not cliche. Yeah, and she mm. thought it was extremely cool. Oh, yeah, she's like, I'm into this shit. This is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And in face, it's not a romantic relationship. He doesn't have any romantic feelings for her. I think the game even makes them specifically say that, like, all, like, all yeah. the time. They, they make them say, like, I do not have romantic feelings for you. We are best friends. Mm-hmm. Which is funny. I don't know. It's also kind of nice to have, like, men and women in, in, in a Japanese game of all things that are not in a romantic relationship but are just friends yeah it's just funny how they feel the need to like lampshade it so much like yeah. this is they don't like each other like that and, and it turns out they really don't they really are best we're best friends yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but, mm-hmm. like for me that, that that made me think the whole time that oh that they're they're gonna set this up just to knock it down like oh it will turn out to be romantic but like mm-hmm. that's why I thought she was she was a lesbian. So I was like, ah, oh, of course. <laughs> She's gonna be the first lady capo. And Anyway. So they've come back to the present, and uh, Jacopo is like, Maria, you're my only- you've always been my only ally. And Maria is like, am I really your only ally? What about your wife? And, um... <laughs> and, uh... He's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And, and she then goes to deliver him this letter that the white-haired girl wrote to him to express her feelings. And then, instead of just giving him the letter and saying, this letter is for you, Maria lies and says that the white-haired girl is having an affair and this letter isn't to him. It's to the guy that she's having an affair with and she's trying to communicate to him. Yep. Oh, Uh. no. What? Ever. And then it cuts to fucking Maria in a separate room doing a comedy evil yeah. face <laughs> and a monologue. The animation completely changes. Like it's just everything. Cha- like the hazy kind of animation they use for this stuff. Just go. She's a, it's very like hard lines and laughing and cackling and you know very distinct evil look. She looks like a theater mask. I. I will say from my own part, though, to be honest, I didn't actually see this coming, truthfully. Which maybe is stupid of me, but, like, I was total... I was kind of taken aback by this. You got me, game! I knew some. I knew something was going on with Maria, but I didn't know what. Uh, yeah, I, I suspected maybe she had romantic feelings for Jacopo or the lesbian stuff, but it, it took me... Yeah, I, 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 I think I, I realized she was evil a little before the reveal, but not, not a... Like... Maybe just before that. Yeah. Like, I, I thought she was doing things to manipulate them, but based on the last, like, based on the last scene we just came out of, I'm like, oh, she's definitely still in love with him. Even though he is the one who specifies it's a non romantic relationship, then she has to be in love with him. I'm like, okay, gay story gone. This is probably just a revenge story of someone who was in love and just the person never realized. And then, nope. Nope. Yeah. I was, I was, I was pretty surprised by this because I, I, was not ex- I was expecting something was up with her, but I was expecting her scheming to be more for like her own benefit and not just to make everyone miserable. Yeah, for real. It was for her own benefit as well. It was, yeah, it was for revenge, I guess. Like, really intense revenge. Satisfaction. But I, th- I thought more like she'd get something more like physical or concrete out of it. Yeah, like just- money or... Yeah. yeah. Money, relationship, whatever. So, she's been working this whole time to get Jacopo to think that the white hair girl's been cheating on him. And Jacopo's like, oh, why does this have to be this way? Why can't things go back to how they used to be? And he, like, still loves the white hair girl. And he says all the stuff that she just said. 
Yeah. It, it goes back and shows why he did all the things he did in the first part of the chapter, why he tore down the Rose Garden, because she said to him that she saw his wife with the man in the Rose Garden under the, um, what was it? The, um, the arch? Oh, I don't remember. But yeah, yeah, something like that. So he had to tear that down. And um, she said she had a thing for some of his business partners. That way he, he sent her away when she was trying to deliver tea. And yeah, it goes all the way to the beginning. Yeah. It explains each and every episode that we've seen where he's acted like a jerk and explains it off as like, oh no, he was being uh, He still acted like a jerk. And it wasn't even a good explanation. Uh, he didn't handle it in the best way at all, but... He never talked to her about it. He never, like, clarified anything with her or anything. Like, he never even says, like, oh, you're cheating on me. Yeah. But he had a motive other than just being a jerk. Uh, Maria even sort of, like, talks about... Well, she even says, like, my plan would completely fall apart in her monologues. It's like, this would all work out fine if you all just talk to each other like normal human beings. But you won't. Yeah. So, what do you want? Yeah, you, he's being a jerk, and she's being too shy and and non confrontational. Non confrontational. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's almost like that textbook lamp shading, you know, where it's like, good thing this thing that should be happening isn't happening to thwart my plans, you know. Although she does almost acknowledge, it, like, I can't believe this is still working. Like, I almost didn't start this. Uh, yeah. Apparently, it just worked out so well that I had to do it. <sighs> what a weirdo. But that's, like, my whole, like, problem with this plan in general, too, because, like, there's multiple... There's a, This goes on for a while. Maybe, well, maybe we'll get there when yeah, we get this there. this is gonna repeat itself a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah, and she... Maria talks about it like she's directing a play, um... And at some point, we get more information that their families had, you know, a rivalry and, and that, you know, the Campanella family was assassinated. And uh, the maid stops us to be like, I, I didn't know this was happening. I didn't realize until it was all over what what was I didn't realize until until everyone found out about Maria at the end. I didn't I didn't realize. And we're like, oh, OK, thanks for checking in. Um, <laughs> so so uh, the white haired girl continues to write Jacopo letters and Maria alters all of them to be from all different men. And it seems like she just, like, keeps making up names and, like, writing them at the top of the letter. And um, even the maid is like, why didn't he recognize that the white hair girl was talking about him, even though the name was altered? How could she have had two identical experiences with two different men? She was like, did he really just not trust her that much? Like, the maid can't even believe that this is working. Yeah. I, this is kind of I, I I don't know I, I feel like this is like kind of bullshit like how how is this working when the game acknowledges that it shouldn't work you're like yeah I don't know if this is the best way to plot this out if you could have to acknowledge yourself <laughs> yeah, that yeah this probably shouldn't work. and he keeps reading the letters he keeps re- relying on Maria as his intermediary and not talking to his wife and then we get a flashback of Jacopo's father telling him. That if he wants to be Capo, he can't let his wife have an affair because it shows that the Capo doesn't have respect. And the father's like, don't let anyone look down on you. And like, words flash on the screen. Responsibility. Respect. Uh, and all this stuff. The poor deserve their position. It's, it's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of words pop up on the screen. Mm. I wish that 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 his relationship with his father and like the values that he grew up with were centered more in this narrative. Like, I, they don't really they don't really bring it up until now. Oh, they don't really bring it up again. Like, they talk about it sort of, but it's not like significant. I, it's this is the only real part where it's. I'm not. Yeah, and again, I'm not like an expert too. But like a big thing with mobs too. I don't know. They're or like these. The Sicilian kind of thing. It's like they're usually like better about the community and like helping out, and everybody <laughs> likes them. They need a community manager. No, I mean, but that's like a big thing because it's like people don't want to turn them in and stuff, and they're like, you know, honestly, like, mob blocks are the safest places to live and things like that. You know, they said that Maria's grandfather was like that, but oh, okay. but, but Jacopo's father wasn't. He was much more stricter, and I see. I don't know. Again, like, Jacobo, though, isn't, like, committing crime. Like, he's not in that 
crime business per se, you know, outside of like the ethics involved and shit. Like, uh, he's, he's there to establish, yeah, he's there to establish a position in the in the new world in America, and bring yeah. back the wealth to 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 his to his own country. Yeah, yeah he's far more concerned with, with right. money. His dad is still the head of the crime family back there. Um, you know, it's implied that like even though he's gonna be the capo for me, I don't know that he actually is. Um, it's more that he's he's going to be and he's establishing himself in the new world. Right. Yeah, because he's supposed to bring the mafia to the new world. Well, he sucks at it. Yeah. Like, where's the illegal gambling rings? And, like, where, you know, like, what's going on here? Where's the money laundering? Oh, maybe this is the money laundering. Yeah. Maybe this is, like, <laughs> I'll invest in this bullshit train shit. Oh, my God, wait a minute. You know, like, to money launder, but it worked out. <laughs> Lucky for him. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so then, an assassin... Uh, so then there's like a knock at the, there's like a, or it's like, oh, you have to go somewhere. And he's like, oh, I do. And he goes to get in his carriage. And then the carriage driver is not his normal carriage driver. And it's actually an assassin. And it's some guy who he put his factory out of business. And he's like, oh, I'm here to get my revenge. He stabs him. And Jagabo gets stabbed. And he's stabbed. And he's like, oh, and he blacks out. But he doesn't die. And he passes out. And, um, the house narrator, kind of, the mansion voice from the previous chapter appears and is like, you've always been this way, again, like like with uh, Yuki Mr. Torrance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the last chapter. And uh, Jacobo flashes back to being made fun of as a kid and wanting to prove himself. Then he flashes back to wanting to make the white-haired girl smile. Then he wakes up in his room, maybe... And he thinks that the white hair girl is with him, and he confesses his love to her because he has a fever and can't stop himself. But it's not the white haired girl; it's the maid. Yeah, we're sort of led to believe that that the white haired girl shows up, but then it shows the maid, and she says, "You should be really telling this to your wife." This is also, I feel like, kind of too little, too late in the sense of like. I feel like the game re- wants me to feel bad for him now, and it's like, nah. Like, you know. You didn't earn this. Yeah, I refuse to feel bad for him. I, and I was kind of saying this before the podcast, too, like, the problem is he is too, he's, like, out and out abusive. He's shitty. Like, I don't know anything he could do to, like, at this point. Outside of, like, and then for three months he got therapy. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I can't, I can't deal with this guy. He's just... What a douchebag. But even for his own circumstances, like, the weird thing is he says these things to the maid. The maid's like, you should probably tell your wife. If he had just actually done that, he would have solved the problem. Yes! Yeah. You know what? Like, even in douchebag land, like, just, I lost my temper, stormed in there. It's like, I know you've been cheating on. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, a lot of ways this that this pull plan sinks, and all of them are fairly natural and pr- are probable to happen. Well, and he... He goes into this, like, spiral of, like, oh, I've been shitty about this. Well, I shouldn't... At this point, I would have to admit I've been super shitty, but she's also been cheating on me, so... he He's he's at this point of, like, uh, can I even be forgiven? Alright, well, maybe we'll just leave her in there for another day while I try and figure out how I'm gonna handle this. <laughs> <laughs> like, his grand scheme is... Maybe she'll eventually forget the guy she's cheating on me with, and then I can apologize. Which is like, what are you doing? Yeah. This is like, it's like when somebody posts those Reddit, am I, am I the asshole posts, and they're very <laughs> clearly the asshole. Where it's like, then it gets reposted to Twitter, because it's like, look at this asshole. <laughs> Like, yes, of course you're the asshole, stupid. Listen, just because I spent 17 hours a day ignoring her and the other seven hours sleeping doesn't mean that I didn't love her, but I just never bothered to tell her. Oh, yeah, I jailed her. I imprisoned her in the shed. That's, like, the third post in the thread on Reddit, too, like. Yeah, that's in, like, the third edit in, yeah. Me, 27-year-old male, her, 27-year-old female. <laughs> uh, I had to, you know, <laughs> she's been a real dick lately, and I don't know why she's always rude to me. Now, yeah, okay, so I ignore her sometimes, and yeah, I put her to jail. Okay, you know, that did happen. <laughs> I, I made her live in the shed, and she writes me. Second edit, yeah, I tore up her rosebed. Fourth edit, okay, yeah, she's in the shed now. Um, <laughs> she's writing these guys' emails. I don't know. I I keep intercepting them. I keep reading her private correspondences without her knowledge and not saying anything to her. 
<laughs> right, exactly. I hacked into her emails. I don't know who she's sending them to, but it all involves stuff that we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! And her prized possession, which I gave her on our honeymoon, parentheses, which, by the way, we didn't even go anywhere because she couldn't decide a fucking thing. The idiot. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> I think the fact that that Jacobo is so mundane is is what really makes this like a more boring thing cuz it's just like it's exaggerated but the sentiment behind his behavior is like very mundane. That's yeah, I <coughs> excuse me. That's the thing cuz like even when they talk about rebuilding his home country, that's where I add that glimmer of hope of like aha, he's got a reason to be this like money focused or whatever. Like you know, or, like, if you had, like, I had a really rough upbringing, I was poor, and we couldn't afford, like, food, and blah, 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 and then you say, all right, I get now why you're obsessed with money, or something, some, like, thing that is not just, I'm a rich, to- I'm a, just a rich asshole, just because right. I'm a rich asshole. I'm, I, this is Billy Zane from Titanic, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, even though he got fucking stabbed, for several months, the letters continue. Several months later, the white hair girl is still writing letters. She still has faith in him. And the narrator uh, says that her obsession with Jacopo is killing her. Um, Maria is still trying to push them to get a divorce, but they both still love each other for some fucking reason. And then, finally... Jack Bo says to Maria, I gotta talk to her. I gotta talk to her. And Maria is like, oh, well, are you sure? Like, maybe not talk to her, actually. Maybe I'll do it. You just tell me the thing and then I'll go tell her. And that's the that's the same thing. You just can stay here, though. Yeah, the grand schemer Maria really has no comeback to that other than like, oh, you know, I don't know if that's such a great idea, but you, uh, you know, don't do that. I never thought this day would come. Like, the yeah. day when you fucking talk to your prisoner. Your prisoner wife. Yeah. Like, and nobody in the house, by the way, saying anything. His business associates. Where's your wife? In the shed where she lives. And she's not <laughs> cheating on me, though. Like, you know, like, what the fuck? Oh, oh we, we respect you so much, God, for, for me, uh, who is keeping his wife in the shed out in the Rose Garden. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Your reputation is sacrosanct, cop. I respect the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> Wife in a shed. You hear about this guy? Yeah. Wife in a shed. That's a respectful man. <laughs> 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 That's a faithful wife to just stay in the shed of her own volition. What a normal fucking guy. Let's invest with him. <laughs> huh, so... <laughs> You're investing in Central Pacific? That guy keeps his fucking wife in a shed! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is my call-out post for Jacopo Berzotti. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maria suggests that they wait and hear the telegram about the Transcontinental Railroad completion together. Um, so, Jacobo, like, I guess, like, set it up where they can hear the telegram in the house so that she doesn't have to go outside the house because she's sick. And, um, and then Maria has an aside where she's like, no, he can't get a happy ending. I'm not going to let him get a happy ending no matter what, because I despise him. And, uh, and then Maria gets a scene where she gets yelled at by the maids to go clean the basement. And, uh, she goes to the basement and she finds a corner that is all, like, has never been cleaned. And she tries, she starts cleaning it and she finds a carving on the floor of the basement and she said it is in, ar- in an archaic form of my country's language. Um, so she, the, I wrote down the whole thing. It says, our lives shall be, shall be forfeit to the witch's curse. Nevertheless, we must lay bare those with sin upon their souls for the redemption of those whom are pure. Should ye mean not to dispel your curse, we implore of you, O witch, to, to mark it with only their bloodlines. The blood of the sinners flows through those who dwelt within this house, but not I. And then she said it looked like her own handwriting. Yeah, it looks like her handwriting. Yeah. Which is, like, the only time we get, like, the supernatural in this episode. Yeah. But so that's an interesting motive, right? Of, like, so the witch's curse is um, to be marked with their bloodline. So their bloodlines end, basically, um, because of the the witch's curse. Um, But, like, uh, 
in the case of, you know, the previous two chapters, Mel and Yukimasa, they didn't die at the end, but their bloodlines ended. Um, but then it's interesting who says, but not I. Like, who's the one saying, like, do this, like, like, sure, take them, but not me. Who, like, all these prayers and stuff seem to be, like, oriented toward that like please take them but not me but not me like who is the me in this yeah it all sounds like everyone's the descendants of people who were involved in the, whatever started all this yeah and how how come like a japanese man and an italian man and spanish man how, how come every, everyone's involved walking to a bar them? oh no like but like am i crazy too and this might just be an art thing but like doesn't maria uh, maria kind of like mel they all kind of look yeah. like that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I felt like especially, but that might be me. Whatever. Whatever. See, uh, b- because it might also be that there are, so the the there might be like the centrally involved people, and then there's sort of the ancillary people who don't get who want to not be caught up with it, even though they are like they are active in the the curse, but they don't want to be caught up in the the curse tra- kept traveling on outside of this mansion. And uh, I'm just wondering if, like, those are the people who are like, hey, I don't want to get caught up in all this stuff. You don't need, like, 17 characters reappearing every time. You only need, like, three or four. So then Maria finds a painting, um, in a, an old, old painting of a, in a box of a person with white hair and fair skin. The face has been all torn up. And um, Maria, like... Ding dong ditches the white hair girl in the shed and just leaves the painting there. And the white hair girl is like, "What the fuck? Did Jacobo have a painting commissioned of me just so he can ruin it and leave it outside my door? Who would do that?" Yeah. Um. And so she has a breakdown. She also like has a breakdown about being called a witch. Like she she just like has those memories always of being called a witch. Um. And uh, she finally resolves that she will wait only as long as the day of the railroad completion, and then if he doesn't do anything, then she's going to leave him, finally. Um, which is very, so, and of course, then he was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally apologize to her on the day of the railroad completion. We're finally going to talk. Um, and on the day of the railroad completion, Jacopo comes and confesses outside the shack, but he gets no response, and she's gone. And this, for the record, also, I think, goes on way yep. too long. And yeah. what I mean by that is just, like, he's, like, out there, there's no answer, like, why aren't you answering me? I know you're in there, what's going on? It's just, like, open the effing door! Like, you know. He just he doesn't even check, and then he just says, okay, you yeah, you're not here, so I guess I'll, here's here's my long monologue that I use to apologize to you before I yeah. even check the door. Yeah. So he finds the phenekisoscope there, and it's clear that like she still used it, and it's all like it's like worn, and that she still used it, and she still cared about him, and she left a note and saying that she was leaving, and you know it reinforces that all the letters she wrote were for him. Um, and he's like, what, what, what is this? Um, because the, the date, and then we find out that the date of the ceremony was postponed due to weather by two days. Um, but he didn't tell the white hair girl that. He told Maria to tell her. Of course she didn't. And of course Maria's plan is so bad. She just gets lucky that the weather changed, you know, like, cause what would the plan have been otherwise? Like, yeah. Oh, I should have lied about this before. Oops. You know. Saved by the bell. That's well, that's Maria. Anyway, and also the reason why that white works is not anything to do with the plot. It's that they wanted one historical fact to come through, in the fact that <laughs> yes, this actually did happen. That when the uh, when the the actual transcontinental railroad was finalized, it was the final thing was the golden spike, which was like a like, like this commemorative spike that was going to be driven by uh, the guy who founded Stanford mm-hmm. University. It was going to be done on May eighth. Literally May 8th, 1869. And it was pushed for two days. So if you go see the commemorative golden spike, in the, if you go, like, it's on display at Stanford, it says May 8th when they mm-hmm. didn't have it until May 10th. So it's the, they, the, the plot device is a real historical fact in this one. Wow. Imagine playing this game and knowing that. Like, did you already, you already knew that, Jim? Did you, like, did you? Oh, no. I looked, I looked that up. No, 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 no. 
imagine already knowing that. I- I'm always going to remember it now because May 10th is my birthday. Oh. So that's hey, nice. Happy, happy close to your birthday. It was supposed to be May 8th, but then the... Yeah. <laughs> when this comes out, Oren Ronan will be a year older. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't know. We're, we're, uh, yeah, probably. Or two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jacopo... He uh, he goes back to the house. He realizes that he's too late. And he realizes that Maria was supposed to tell her and that she didn't. And he finally begins to become suspicious of Maria. He looks all over for her and he finds her in his room waiting. And she's wearing an outfit. Oh boy. <laughs> and the music crescendos very well. It's everything about... Everything about that f- shot of Maria is extremely good in a gay way, um, and uh, but also f- hilarious. <laughs> so she's waiting in like a sexy outfit in his chair with a gun, and she's like, "I loathe you ever from forever since we had our reunion as adults." And she was like, "I should have been in his. I should have been in his, in your place." And, uh, because Jacopo's father murdered her father and grandfather, and she's like, I should have been Capo, but I couldn't be because I I was a woman and I had to be sent away. And honestly, Maria makes a lot of great points. (laughs) (laughs) She probably should have been Capo instead of him. I mean, based on this alone, this whole chapter shows that she would have been a better Capo. Yeah, well, no. Wait, no, she has terrible plans. Like, they're all just... Basically, her all... This will only work because... Because Jacopo is such a bad choice for... She's not that she's a good choice. He's just an awful one. Right, she's just better than him. Yeah. Yes! She's technically second worst because of all these terrible <laughs> plots, really. Uh... This, so this whole she even says, and I quote, "This whole thing could have been avoided if the two of you had a single conversation." Yeah. Huh. This this chapter really beats you over the head with its moral too, which is talk to your <laughs> wife. Um, in case you weren't sure. And don't put her in a shed. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, the lack of communication wasn't really the problem here. <laughs> you can't talk to your wife when she's locked in a shed in the backyard. <laughs> The best thing is that the lack of communication goes all the way to the final scene where he talks to the goddamn shed first. (laughs) So, okay, so the reason why this is a JoJo's is because Maria has a gun and she's like, now I'm going to shoot you. But Jacobo also has a gun because he because he's prepared for this ahead of time uh for somehow he's just always prepared and always has a gun on him in his own home and he gets a gun and shoots her and kills her before she can shoot him and kill no, him no she, she shoots, shoots him she shoots, she shoots him. him but yeah but she doesn't do a good job with with the bullet that he gave her yeah that was great yeah. by the way she shoots him and then and then tells the yeah, th- then he tells her, you should always shoot someone between the eyes. Yeah, it's literally the Thanos line. He's like, you should aim for the head. Yeah. I hate it. That's bad. <laughs> it was dumb. It was, I was like, oh, nobody wins. And then we got little, a little, another flashback of his father telling him, one, to always have a gun with him. <laughs> specifically, specifically for Maria. He's like, hey, yeah, I know you want to forgive her and make her your maid, but just in case, always have a gun with you. And then he never suspects her for the rest of his life. My dad taught me two things in life. Murder my wife and bring a gun. The thing is that his father told him to kill her a long time ago, but he decided to instead make her his maid just so she would be in a low enough position and would be safe. But she resented him for making her her maid. Shocking. So I mean, to be fair. (laughs) I wonder why. Yeah, he he knew that if he didn't, then someone would probably have her killed because she was like a a remnant of, of the rival family. Yeah. It's all a little weird. Yeah. But... But they weren't rivals initially. It was just I feel like I feel like they made like Campanels made like a power move or something that didn't work out or maybe I don't know, right? Because weren't they like more closely related? Well, no. The, so the Barzani is the second in command, and then the 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 uh, Campanellas are just trying like he's just trying to solidify power in that small little area, and they're like, no, we got to grow. So mm. to grow, we got to take over. All right. 
in that case, forget my. Please forget my uh, my metaphor from before about the Sopranos and the Imperials. It's not that. You gotta take over and build trains. So none of Jacobo's true intentions got through to either Maria or the white-haired girl, because he had these feelings, but he never communicated them, ever, not once. And in fact, he acted the opposite of how he felt. Uh, the maid... The, the maid arrives to read him at the very end of all this, and is like, you know, money and influence, which is all that you have left now, is what you wanted from the mansion. What are you going to do now? <laughs> And he says, I guess I'm going to keep doing the same thing. And, and she's like, you have to communicate with people. And he he doesn't have, like, this is so, it's so bad. Like, it's so, like, the maid is like, did you, did you figure it out? And he's like, no. You know what the worst part of this is, too? It's like, I guess for me, or another, I shouldn't say the worst part, but like, Another thing that bugged me about this, it's like, you. I feel like Jacobo is a pretty much a completely different character once he's going to Marine. He's like, I gotta talk to her. And I really like it. It's like, you, and like you said before, like, there's no indication of this whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah. It's like, here's your new Jacobo. What do you think? And it's like, no, game, you already showed me Jacobo. This is not him. Like, get out of here. It's Jacobo who can't be excused by all the stuff the game puts up. And it's like, nah, that, that doesn't really do it. Yeah. Uh, Jacopo is, is, is always a shitty person, but I think the game just did a thing where they only showed you select scenes with him in the first part. Yeah. They selectively show what, what they, they chose to... I mean, they didn't show any of his concessions with Maria that were, where she manip- manipulated him into doing these things. Mm-hmm. And then once you sh- you've seen the twist, then they show everything. They show, they show both the shitty parts and the parts where he's being... Sympathetic, <laughs> right? But but he's a shitty person. I mean, he's an abusive. Oh, for yeah, person. there's yeah, because yeah. he should have just talked to his wife. He, sh- I think he should have lost the gunfight too with Maria. Yeah. Like I don't think anything is gained by having him survive that. But I think that's related to that curse where it was like, don't kill them, just end their bloodlines, which is what happens to him. He died alone. He searched for the white hair girl, but he was never able to find her. He died alone. The end. The end. The door closes. That was it. But the chapter is not over. So, Master, if you remember who you are and you have a spouse, be nice to her. And the maid is gone. Right? So then the, then the maid is gone. Like, mic drop. The maid is gone now. Oh, yeah. So we're back in the, the back in the, like, interstitial and, like, the maid doesn't exist anymore. We're just by ourselves. Hmm. And so that's kind of scary. Um, I feel like a lot of these things would be would feel a lot scarier if I was watching them in a movie versus if I was re- versus reading them in a visual novel. Um, it, but it has really good atmosphere, for sure. And uh, But so that's the whole fucking story of Jacopo. Like, that's it. That was it. He died alone. Because he never talked to his wife. That was stupid. He loses his best friend and his wife. He probably should have been his best friend. But, you know, like, that's, that's it for Jacopo. But it's not really this. It's like it's a cursed ending, but it's not really the most cursed ending. It's like, oh yeah, he had a bunch of money and stuff. Compared to Yuki Masa. No, like, yeah, exactly. God. So, so yeah, it, I think overall because the last chapter was so intense and this was such a like it was this was so petty. It was, it was tame by comparison. Yeah, it felt like small potatoes. I don't really. I think I, I'll come out and say like, I didn't like this chapter. Like I like the other two. I just ones kind of sucked. Definitely the weakest so far. Yeah, this one I think was the weakest, and just the order in which things are revealed and the order in which the story is told. It feels like a lot of times like there's a twist, like oh he had a gun, and then it's re- then it's explained afterwards like why he had it, and like I really don't like that uh, kind of storytelling. It should have. It's yeah. Yeah, it's like the opposite of Chekhov's gun. It's like, hey, a gun fired. Oh, the one up here on the wall that I forgot to tell you about. You know, yeah. like, it's, yeah. I'm an expert marksman, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> right. And and it doesn't it make, like, so much more, like, poetic justice. And again, I know, because of the curse, that she returns that bullet. Even the line, she's like, I'm going to give you back this childhood gift. It's, like, a pretty good line. It just, like... But then it's like this, it's like good even for a horror kind of thing. And then this like stupid action movie comeback of, didn't I always tell you? Yeah, it's, uh, I know I'm retreading. It just made me mad. Anyway, sorry. House. Yeah, so any other final thoughts about Jacopo's story before we get back to the house? 
it, this it seems like this has like the, the, the whole game has a very you know, a drawn out way of expressing itself which is fine it's, it's just a choice but this chapter does it a lot and then it just repeats itself like it doesn't have a lot of character development to talk about so it ends up like just go line after line of kind of doing the same thing over again like they established Jacobo being a jerk and then they just repeat that for a while and they establish you know like the maid being nice to the uh, to the, the the silver-haired woman, and then it just repeats that for a while, and I think that kind of get a little bit grating. Like it, it wasn't just that the that this particular chapter like doesn't really develop a good narrative. It, it also has really poor pacing. That it, it yeah, it definitely is the weakest. It's not bad. It's just the weakest of the three we've had. Uh, it was yeah. I th- all right, I'll give it a, a solid mediocre. I liked yeah. Marie. Um, yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't see the twist coming, honestly. I was okay with it, but I just... I All in all, yeah. I don't know. I wanted to be gay, but it wasn't, so I'm gonna <laughs> have to lower my score. This, honestly, at least that would have made it, like, interesting, too, you know? Yeah, it would have switched it up a little. Yeah, this is all just kind of, like... Mm, I don't know. Just a lot of twists, and then explaining the twist after it happens. Like, so you don't have enough information to really, like, anticipate or predict anything, and... It's just not fun. <laughs> it's like in Metal Gear when you kill a boss and then they give you this their, their tragic backstory, and it's like, no, nah, it's late. It's- yeah, it's, I didn't regret. I did not regret my words and deeds after reading this chapter. Yeah. <laughs> so back to the house. So the maid's gone. Uh, we start walking around the house, um, and a painting starts talking to us. The same painting that we noticed before and thought was beautiful. Uh, now it is pitch black, and there's a man in the painting, and he's talking to us. Um, we have questions for the man in the painting. Um, we ask him, who, who is he? And, uh, he's like, let's see, there's, oh, there's like a little bit of stuff he says before we ask him questions. Um, he says, if you run into him, could you tell him that I really regret what I did? Um, he feels terrible about painting that picture. Um, and he says, by the time I had realized it, it was too late. He was already dead. Um, and I was like, is this Basil from the picture of Dorian Gray? Mm. Um, but, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like, it, when it seems like if he's a painter, like, is it the painter from the first story that was, um, yeah, that's what I thought too, at first too. Yeah, that's what I thought, but it doesn't, it doesn't make sense with what is, with his, does, yeah. yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't line up. up. So it's, it must be a different painter. Um, the painting might be the one with the ripped out face. So. Yeah. Or is it the one he's speaking out of? I don't know. Why Why would that have hurt anyone? But anyway, we don't know. Maybe I, I assume that the next the next door might include this guy. I don't know, though. Didn't he say something like that, too? Like, something about the next door? Well, so the painting man tells us, basically, that we're going around looking at all these memories, and eventually we're going to find the one that's ours, and then we're going to remember which era's master we are. Yeah. And um, the we asked the, the painting, who am I? And uh, the painting says that we look like a cloud of shadow, so I assume we look like Bestia. Um because we don't know what we we don't know who we are, so we just appear yeah. as nothing. Um, he also berates us for asking him that. Yeah, the man in the painting is great, and I like him a lot, actually. <laughs> uh, he also wonders if we will be able to bear witnessing our own tragedy, uh, which is a heavy thing. <laughs> as long as the tragedy is not that we're Jacobo, then yes. Yeah, he warns us at the ne- about the next story. And he says that any tragedy too beautiful to be real is a fabrication. And it's weird that he's, he really sets up the next chapter as being the final chapter. But, uh, you know, because we have to look to see these things about, like, oh, how long is this game going to be? We all know it's not the final chapter. But he definitely, like, tele- telegraphs said, oh, it's going to be the final chapter. <laughs> I asked again, yeah, because he really made it sound like that. In fact, we're not even halfway through the game, so... <laughs> So then we ask him, where is this place? And he says, he's not sure. He's just a man who was turned into a painting by regrets. Um, so why would he know? <laughs> and at that point, I would be done with asking the painting questions and be like, okay, good. I got my answer. Thanks, bud. Yeah. So, and then he, he, um, 
theorizes that if we came here of our own volition and we weren't summoned by the house, then maybe we are the one who's going to break the curse. No elaboration. Um, so then we ask, who is the maid? And uh, he says, it's up to us to be good or bad to her. Maybe she doesn't know who she is either. Um, cool. Um, so I guess that, that maybe our choices matter in that way. That like if, if we are nice to, to the maid or not, it depend, like has some effect on the ending, maybe? I don't know. Um, but uh, the painting then reminds us that we can either claim our old self or toss it aside. He then offers us an item if we reach into the painting. And, of course, I'm going to reach my hand right into that nice painting and take a key. We get a key from the paint. So, you can- this is a choice. You can choose not to take the key. Um, but I trusted the nice painting man, and I, and I got the key. And it's the key to the master bedroom, he says. Um, and he keeps talking about a she- being the one who summons and the one who gave him the key. Um, but I'm not sure if she is the maid or the white-haired girl or what. It might be the maid, right? Like, it's implied, but then then later on it's not implied. So like it She might be more complicit. It's very ambiguous. Later on she the maid tells you she she doesn't know what what you're talking about when you ask her about the key. Yeah. And so he, the man in the painting says to talk to him again if we learn his name. So uh, now we have the option of exploring all the different rooms. So going in order, if you go to the entrance, it's sealed shut, you can't get out. You hear a muffled voice saying, burn the witch and crucify the impure. Cool. If we go to the fireplace, we go to sleep in the rocking chair that we woke up in at the beginning of the game. And we have a flashback of someone, of, like, us reminiscing with someone about when she first, the maid, when she first started working here at the mansion. Um, so, it's, it's, it seems a lot like, again, like, this, this makes me think about the flashback that we saw between someone named Giselle and someone named Michelle. And it, um, reminded me of that, like, is, you know, when yeah. she... That kind of thing. And she opens up the window to let some light in, and whether we are uh, sensitive to light for some reason. Yeah, and she's very cheerful. Mm. And, oh, that's in the master bedroom. Oh, with it? Oh, okay. Yes, the but she's very like bright and cheerful in this. And um, then we go to the den. The den is where the Jacobo flashback was, um, and it still smells like smoke. The billiard balls ro- are rolling around the table on their They're own, and we. We are canonically a fucker because we take a ball off the table to see what happens. Imagine. Oh, I would have done that. Imagine insulting a ghost like that. So we insult the ghost. Oh, I would 100%. 110%. I'd fuck with a ghost. You got it. Well, you don't know it's a ghost. Huh? Even so, if it was, I'd mess with it. Very cheeky reaction to this very scary thing that's happening. Um, which is funny. Oh, this is haunted mansion levels of scary right now. It, it could be Jacobo's ghost too, which we know he's going to be too frightened to do anything to you. Yeah, and it is him because a shadow appears and instructs you to put the ball back, and his silhouette looked a lot like Jacobo. Uh, I like that we sass the ghost, especially his ghost, because fuck him. What's it going to do? Not talk to me for two years? Yeah, <laughs> lock me in a shed. So we go outside to the Rose Garden, and we hear the happy childhood memories of Mel and Nellie at, as children, and then the Rose Garden slowly wilts as we look at it. So this is very, like, Haunted House. Then we see another shadow ghost, uh, which is obviously Mel. He's muttering something, saying that he just wanted a peaceful life, and he's, like, asking for absolution. He's like, I just, t- I didn't do anything wrong, though, right? Honestly, Mel, you, you didn't. I don't know. (laughs) And then we can go downstairs to the cellar, and we hear the beast, and uh, it makes us uncomfortable, and there's a jump scare! Ooh. And that one did, that one I I did, like, I don't know, I I didn't have, like, a huge reaction, but I was kind of like, oh, that's a jump scare. I, I hate it. I hate all the jump scares. 
Yeah, I did not expect it. Because, again, because the skeleton didn't really work on me, so... I, they're, they're stupid, too. They're, like, they're just... They're just little JPEGs. Like, it's not even super frightening. I just hate it. Yeah. It's like, um... What is that? like? Because everything is just so still in the game... I mean, even in Five Nights at Freddy's, you're, like, moving around the cameras. It's just, like, I've stared at this one single sprite for the past five minutes, and now, oh, shit, this one's jumped out at me with a loud noise. Yeah. It's like that House of Jump Scares game. Oh, you mean Spooky's House of Spooky's Jump Scares? Spooky's House of oh, yeah. Jump Scares. I mean, at least that's, oh, like, tongue-in-cheek of... than I... Oh, sorry? The John McCain one. Oh, it's a rise, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, we see another shadow ghost, and it's the shadow ghost of Yukimasa. We add it, ask him a question, but he responds in a language we don't know. So he's trying to tell us something, but we don't understand what he's saying. Um, oh, and that's annoying, too, because it has this very grating uh, sound. And it, apparently that's what Japanese sounds like in this universe. Yeah. It's just nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> Next, we go to the library. A bunch of books fall down on their own. Uh, and I love, I love this because it's also very cheeky, and it says they had fallen down on their own, but they showed no signs of putting themselves away. And then we do, and then it falls again, which is the real nightmare. So, Kaede, we are not. Um, no, not as good at book arranging as, uh, as Kaede from V3. If we go see the stained glass window before we go to the master bedroom, then we sit and almost remember something, but don't. Um, if we call the maid ten times, we get an achievement. Which did not pop for me. I was very annoyed. <laughs> it didn't show up on the screen for me either, but I did get it. Huh. Could, there's nothing, but, like, the text doesn't change, or at least I didn't notice anything different. Yeah, there's no, like, thing. It popped up for me. Did you guys play offline? Because you gotta be online, I think, to get it. That could, that's it, I played offline. No, I, I mean, I played online, it's just, like, the, the game, it's... I, normally Steam gives you a notification and I didn't see it, but also the text. Was there anything different like the 10th time you did it? No, there no. wasn't. It doesn't no. Just yeah. no. Okay. Steam pop. So then we can go to the master bedroom and use the key. And then we get that flashback to another master, us and or us, being roused by the maid. And that master appears as a shadow ghost as well. Um... I'm not sure, like, so, like, it's kind of, I kind of got confused about who the ghost was, if the ghost was the master, if the ghost is someone else who used, who's called her, but maybe that's the maid. Anyway, we try to, like, reach out at, because it says we reach out to touch the, sh like, I guess what we are reaching out to touch is not the shadow ghost, but the memory of the maid who's there, but our hand passes through her, um, because we're looking at a scene from another period, period of time. Um, and the presumably the maid, but she just gets question mark, question mark, question mark, is like teasing us. She's saying like, oh, I thought you were like so intimidating, but you're really quite childish and have a short temper and all this stuff. And she, but she's excited and she's like talking like they're beginning a relationship. And she's like, we agreed to live together, not just in the same house, um, which I could see stemming from the scene we saw between Giselle and Michelle where... It was like she just like showed up and it's like I can't I can't go back to the village and like I want to be here. Yeah, I think it's the same characters. I don't know, but it's probably Michelle and Giselle. She refers to him as master. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like Giselle. Yeah, Giselle is cheerful and optimistic about their future together, and the the mansion voice sort of narration says, "Master, can you say my name?" But we can't. We can't say her name. We don't know what it is. And uh, then after that scene, we can go back and look at the stained glass window. And if we go there, uh, which one is the angel that weighs your soul? Mm -hmm. It says this angel, this archangel stained glass is going to weigh your soul. And I feel like I should know which one that is, but it's I don't. It's not Michael. It's not Michael. That's all that I know. <laughs> Uh, what are the other two? Raphael and, uh... Gabriel. Gabriel, yeah. I don't think it's Gabriel, Gabriel either for some reason, but I could be wrong. You're real, I don't know. I don't remember which one. I only knew the three archangels, I think. So, um... So, yeah, the so the angel's gonna weigh our soul. We start feeling a feeling. And finally, we call for the maid. 
And she answers, and the maid's like, you're the one who disappeared, not me. Um, and the maid is confirmed is not a ghost. She says, we ask her if she's a ghost, and she's like, I'm not a ghost, but she's clearly dead and not alive. The only remaining option is that she is a vampire. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. That's not, that's not the only remaining. Oh. Oh. So, uh, we also asked, like, wasn't the stained glass shattered in an earlier episode? And she's like, it was, but now it's back. And she is like, maybe this is because the mansion is not currently in the real world. It's in the place between. Yep. And, uh, we tell the maid about the memories that we saw in the master bedroom, but she's not aware of them. So, perhaps she doesn't remember being Giselle. And uh, the ma- the maid doesn't know about the man in the painting either, but the way she says it makes me think that she could be lying. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I thought too. That like she's unreliable as as this sort of like pseudo narrative person who's like you know telling us all this stuff leading into these stories. We we can't trust her anymore. She's a she's a bad host. Oh no. <laughs> So then, in another great Danganronpa V3 callback, the final door is at the top of a very long spiral staircase. (laughs) Um, So she leads us and she's like, okay, the final door, the game's going to end for real, is at the top of this very tall spiral staircase at an observation tower. And she's like, observation towers are usually in castles. I don't know why there's one here in this mansion. Um, And we start to feel really anxious as we go up the stairs. Um, And all of this lead up has been implying that like, maybe these are this, this one's going to be our actual memories. Mm -hmm. And the door has bloodstains on it and holes bored into it in like a pattern. I don't know. And then uh, something that would be very effective if it wasn't just written down. Um, We suddenly screams come from the bottom of the, of the tower um, saying, kill the witch and burn her. Then we walk into the fourth door and we are surrounded by darkness. And the title card says, the fourth door, 1099. My favorite tax form. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we wrap it up. Yeah. Yep, yep. Any, uh, any theories about, about who we are? What's going on? I got nothing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm still kind of going with Michelle or uh, just you know Giselle, but like, I I I don't know. I mean, I I'm not really sure what to make of the whole like oh, this is the last door kind of thing. Where I don't know if like story. I don't know. I think you know this will be the last like flashback that is unrelated to us directly, and then after after that will be like us reliving our lives through flashbacks. Yeah. Let's hope. That sounds like a lot of fun. So, for next time, I'm looking at a walkthrough, and I haven't played this yet, but the actual door seems to be shorter than the ones we've been to, at least uh, by, by the number of chapters it has. But then, before the next chapter, we have three possible endings that we can get. Like three mm-hmm. different ones. And I, I think they're all short. That's what I read. That they're all like, really like you, you choose the wrong choice and you get an ending like pretty quickly. So I guess we should do them in order. In order. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sure. But so the, the first choice, we, we, we will we, we'll have three choices. And the one we should choose to continue is the one that says there is still more to be done. And the other two options mm-hmm. each have uh, an ending attached to it. So if you choose... The first two options, you'll get an ending. So I guess do that. Let's let's save and do those, yeah. and then go to the third one. Yeah. So be lazy. Yeah. It's like there's more work. Like there's no more work to be done. Whatever the two options are. Like yeah. Yeah. Well, I I, I can tell you because it doesn't I, it doesn't doesn't say anything to me. The two options are accept her proposition, reject her proposition, and there is still more to be done. Right. Before we get there, we'll get we'll get the end of chapter four. Then we get the three choices, I believe. Yeah, but but not the beginning of chapter five yet. Right. And then you have something you have to do seven times, but there doesn't seem to be any choices there. And then we will we'll have another choice. Uh, and again, the first one leads to an ending, and the second one is the one you choose to continue on with the game. So, I guess 
we'll do all of them unless one of the one of us does it before the others and says it's too long or that makes sense and when we can report it in, in in our chat sure. yeah <laughs> yeah but the door itself at least the, this this works to list in the like the chapter titles inside the doors and the one we just did had like one two three four five six that sounds 20 i think yeah 20 and the next one only has seven so it seems a lot shorter unless those chapters are really long we'll find but out we'll find out <laughs> Yep. All right. Next time, everybody. See you next time in Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana.